development of the strategic research and innovation agenda that has been presented and that you already have um, heard about it, uh, or there is a very good document <coughs> uh, among the uh, papers you have got today. Uh, so from the beginning in the implementation plan to develop this area, what is your JPA um, consider the, op the, op the opportunity to uh, launch joint calls for transnational collaborative projects based <clears throat> on common principles among all the uh, countries and funding organizations participating in the call. Those are focus on research need and R&D priorities identified by the SRUIA. All of them has been developed under the Water JPI implementation plan. It is based on a variable geometry and flexibility of research funding organizations, not only JPA members, as you will, will have the opportunity to see. Uh, we have come with many other funding organizations that are not part of the JPI. Um, we are based on a common international evaluation and based on national funding. So the funding for this call is basically coming from the national programs of the countries participated in the call. But also, we have some contribution of the Commission due to our participation in the Seranet Fund projects. And then we do also a joint follow-up and impact assessment on the project and on the calls. Um, here you have a summary of the joint call that has been launched until now. We have launched three in the, um, since 2013 to 16. The one was the pilot call. The second one that was only based on national funding. Uh, 2015 um, and 2016, there are two ERA and ETCO funds that we call it like that because it's the way in which the project was named at the beginning. You have here um, the timeline of the Water API um, supporting projects and joint calls. Uh, so these are, for the moment, the three running um, project of the Water API. The first was, was a CSA called Water that you have uh, heard about it today. Under this project, it was launched the first, we call it pilot call, that was on emerging pollutants. I will give you some information about more information regarding this call. The second one was launched in 2014 and it was oriented to research innovation and innovation for developing technological solutions and services. It is what we call Water Wars 2014. Actually, the kickoff of this project uh, was taking place yesterday as some of the um, researchers and coordinators for the project are here with us today. And recently, in 2016, it has been launched Waterworks 2015, <clears throat> oriented to water in agriculture, forestry, and aquaculture. As you have also uh, heard in some pre presentation, there are um, two other additional projects on our pipeline. This is another CSA <clears throat> that is now under evaluation. And a second era NETCO fund that is proposed for the next um, period of the H2020 work program. We have tried to cover some of the uh, needs, research needs and uh, themes identified in this area. I am, uh, as, you, as you have listened <clears throat> before, the five different pillars of the area, and we have shown here um, how the different calls that we have launched address different research need um, in this um, uh, uh, common area. The pilot call was oriented to the identification and prevention on emerging freshwater contaminants, also to the control, mitigation, and methods for treatment and removal of pollutants, and also the impact on ecosystem services and human health. That was a pilot call <clears throat> with 8 million euros for the project to be funded, only national funds. Uh, the Reno Net, uh, um, COFAN Water Wars 2014, as you can see here, was more related to water treatment, reuse, recycling, desalinization, resources management, and also to mitigate impact extreme events that flu floods and drugs <clears throat> at catchment scale. That was, um, has been a call with a total budget of 14 million together, National Flam plus EC COFAN. And the one that is now under evaluation 
is Water Watch 2014, as you can see, more oriented to water and agriculture. Um, this, this call, as you will listen um, um, soon, uh, is a joint initiative between Water JPI and FACHE GPI. That, that has been also a very important collaboration, it's been a very important collaboration between our two, uh, two JPIs. And that has an um, um, estimated by budget of 25 million. So altogether, that means that um, Water GPI has been able to mobilize among the national programs plus the European Commission an amount of 47 million in three years. So I think that this is a, and then you will see also the mobilization of uh, researchers, stakeholders, and projects that have been participated in this call. So this is not the main activity of the JPI, but uh, we can um, consider that has been an important activity of the Water JPI. Um, the first call, um, <clears throat> it was funded by 10 countries that are uh, named there. It was just a preliminary call to put in place all the instruments that we had to adequate. You can imagine that each country have um, different um, um, procedures, most of them based on the common principles, but there are different requirements. So that was the exercise to, to, to do the fine tuning of all the national instruments to be able to run a joint call. Um, 105 proposals were received, seven projects funded with a total amount of eight, um, eight million euros. The second one um, already had uh, 15 countries. We counted many of the partners, some associated, <clears throat> as some non-partners of the JPI, plus the ECO fund. And we have also an international partner that was uh, South Africa joining us in this call. That was already a two-step procedure, but uh, um, uh, seems that is a quite adequate procedure for our calls. We received 118 pre-proposals, 15 projects were founded, and uh, four, um, 14 million euros allocated to this call. And the one that uh, is now under evaluation, as I told you, uh, is counting with 22 countries, including um, other international collaborations that we have started at the JPI, like Canada, Egypt, South Africa, Taiwan, and Tunisia. It's also a two-step procedure. It's a joint initiative between JPI and FACHE. So we have able to recruit some agencies that were participating more on the field of agriculture with FACHE, and now they have joined our call. 200 proposals and an estimated budget of 25.5 million euros. Just to give you an idea of, about the distribution of uh, of, um, and the participation countries in the different calls. This is the image of the first pilot call, the distribution of proposals and coordinators among the participating countries of the 102 proposals. Uh, this is the distribution of proposals among participating countries in uh, Water Wars 2014. Obviously, many more countries <coughs> participated on it, including uh, South Africa, as you can see. And the present one, with 22 countries, so the distribution is, and uh, the mobilization of uh, researchers is even uh, uh, larger, uh, with a double no number of proposals, and all the international uh, collaboration countries participating in this one. This is the, um, the full map of participating countries in the three um, calls, uh, with different intensity of those that have participated in the three of them, of only one or two. So we cover most of the countries, not all of them, but most of the JPA members, plus other uh, associated in total 22, as you have in the, in the figure. Just to have a view to the funded projects, the distribution of the funded projects among the participating countries, 
we, we have been able to get um, um, participation of research organization for most of the project of the countries funding the call. That is an important um, uh, value for our initiative. Uh, and that is the case in the pilot call. It was the case also in the Water Wars 2014. Obviously, the effort is different because the number of proposals presented were very different, but um, most of the countries allocated national funds for this call are participating in the funded projects. Um, you can see also that even small countries with a quite few number of proposals, um, they were participating in consortia. The, the size of the consortia is around um, between three and eight, let's say. Normally, the, the average could be five uh, partners uh, per proposal, um, with a final total budget close to 1.5 million. This is the figure just to give you an idea of the evolution of, of uh, our um, figures and dates. <clears throat> This is the evolution of uh, the number of countries in the three calls that have been launched. The evolution of proposals presented to the call in this, uh, from the pilot to the what was 2015. This is the number of projects founded in the first two, an estimation, a possible estimation for the 2015. And you have here also the increase of national and easy budget to the, to the calls. So um, we are quite satisfied by the evolution of these figures. Um, we know <clears throat> that beyond these statistics, there are also other achievements that I want to comment very briefly. Um, this calls over these years has um, permitted to implement many areas of our strategic agenda. And we are planning to be also very selective and focus the effort on some of the um, uh, um, priorities and needs um, um, of this area coming to um, uh, contribute to the social challenges <clears throat> in Europe and beyond. Um, the research funding organizations have increased significantly their national funding to join call. We have also obtained, as you, as you have seen, a significant support by the European Commission um, implementing to implement our SRIA, but also to implement some areas of interest for the uh, uh, Societal Challenge 5 work program. Also, we have uh, got, um, I would say, that um, enormous um, submission, um, number of submission, submitted proposals for the budget available. So that means that uh, uh, the mobilization of researchers of the different countries in, this, in these calls has been important. It seems that the format, the consortium size, and the budget seems to be adequate for, for transnational cooperation. Um, we have um, the requisite of five different countries per consortia, but I, I, as I told you, the average is around four or five um, uh, countries per consortia. Um, some countries and agencies have grounds for improvement, um, the participation in the joint calls. But most of the um, research funding organization, as I told you before, has been presented in funded projects. The cooperation, we want to highlight the cooperation with FACHE in 2014. That is the first, as far as we know, inter-JPI cooperation. And it's a path for future cooperation in different needs to gain synergy and to complement approaches um, to uh, societal challenge, to explore more thematic synergies and coincidence in this area, and that probably could be also extended to them, um, JPIs uh, close in, in, in um, scope to water JPI, as it could be uh, also climate or, or urban Europe or um, some other JPIs, as uh, antimicrobial resistance is another um, uh, GPI that could have some um, um, research needs and priority in common with us. Coming back to the international cooperation, that is our uh, other of our objectives for the JPI, we can we can we can consider a net increment in the number of countries. 
Um, water GPI is now under a strategy that will be explained later on to, to develop a strategic um, um, uh, direction to cooperate with, pro, with um, um, countries and funding organizations to create more synergies um, for the development of our SRIA. Um, but also for the uh, funding organization, it has been also, um, the, um, the calls has been also a, a source of good practices, a source of mutual learning projects. This fine-tuning of procedures have represented to, um, to agree on all the process from evaluation to the follow-up of the project. Still, we have some um, um, way to do regarding the national requirements that are established in the call. This is, uh, has been identified as a need that we have to get closer in the national requirement to facilitate um, the national management because I, I have to remind you that the, the, uh, the funding of the project is done at national level. So the money comes from the governments. So the final um, uh, funding of the project is made at national level. So there are also some requirements that we have to approach and to um, um, get more, more homogeneous in the different countries. Uh, these are also elements uh, on the ground for the intensification of alignment of different funding organizations. This could be on activities, on procedure, not only in a common agenda, but also in the way we develop and implement activities and, um, and um, funding uh, procedures. And also to tackle society challenge in a topic of growing interest. So these are the figures. I don't want to leave to end my presentation without thanking, thanking all the partners that has been, as you know, um, that, that, that have a, a, a very strong effort on um, managing the call. We have had uh, several call secretariat that you have been probably contacted with them. We have also partnered um, involved in the follow-up of the project. We have many representatives of the call steering committee that we have had long session of, of work and discussion to develop this these uh, protocols for, for common understanding on the procedures. I want to thank all of them and also the funding organization and the commission that have been able to, to meet the results for the moment. Um, this, uh, I, I just wanted to, to don't forget um, that the, the launching of call is not the end of our, our way. Um, now we are proposing also um, alignment of um, ongoing projects. I mean, we want to create a, a, a networking among all the projects founded in the, in the Waters API. We, we believe that can be creating um, synergies and breathing gaps during the execution of the project. Yesterday we have one of these um, kickoff um, um, alignment of ongoing projects. Uh, the alignment we also organize with relevant H2020 project, and we hope that it will contribute to the valorization of R&D results, to uh, identify the, the, the contribution to the social challenges, and also to the contribution to implement the European policies. So we want to create a network of um, uh, ongoing project funded by the EPI, but also other related relevant projects, and to be able to go all the way to valorate and to analyze the contribution to the European social challenges. That is all for my side. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Rosa. Uh, and uh, thank you for the figures. Uh, it may be new to some people. Uh, we now move to the second uh, roundtable uh, workshop. Uh, uh, as in the first one, I will hand the, the chair over to Laura Raska from, um, uh, from uh, Finland. And she will invite the uh, six, or six speakers, I think, to come and sit at the top table.
Okay. We are ready. So good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Laura Raska, and I'm coming from Academy of uh, Finland, and I'm also the member of the governing board, the Water GPI governing board. And I was, uh, or the Academy of Finland was very much involved with the pilot call process. So this is really a very great pleasure for me to be able to moderate this um, roundtable discussion or this panel discussion. So uh, to start with, uh, by introducing uh, our very experienced uh, uh, panelists that uh, represent very different and wide uh, approach to water domain. Maybe we will start from, from the right side. Margit, could you start by introducing yourself? Okay, my name is Margit Noll. I'm not a water expert. I'm chair of the uh, JBI Urban Europe. So I'm trying to link the, your water expertise and your research agenda to our urban research agenda. And it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Please, Stefan. Hi, I'm Stephanie Ring Pfeiffer. I'm the managing director of the Global Water Research Coalition. And I will introduce myself a little bit more when I go through my few minutes. Hello, my name is Helmut Löwe from the German Federal Ministry of Education and Research, Deputy Director of the Division Resources and Sustainability. And I always introduce myself of being the Aquarius of our ministry. And you are also the member of the governing board also, of yes. Water GPI. Yes. So please. Yes, thank you. I'm Panos Balabanis. So I'm the deputy head of the Eco Innovation mm. un Unit in uh, the European Commission, uh, Directorate General for Research and Innovation. And I have been following also the developments of the GPI, but more generally also I follow the strategic preparation of uh, water programs and more relevant you know, environmental mm. programs. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, yeah, my name is Don Pearson. I'm a researcher at uh, Uppsala University, um, and I've just received a, I'm, I'm leading a consortium of a JPI project that's just starting now, uh, Prognos. Uh, I'm, I'm really more of a scientist um, and a researcher, uh, but I have, for the last about 11 years before I came back to Sweden, also worked as the, uh, the chief of water quality modeling for New York City water supply as well. So I, I know a little bit about that side of the, of the picture as well. Dionisio, please. Yeah, well, thank you very much for inviting me to the organizers. Uh, my name is Dionisio Perez. I'm a researcher here in, in Italy and based in Venice in the Fundación Enrico Mattei and the Euro Mediterranean Center on Climate Change. Uh, I'm a Spanish, so previously I've been working for seven years uh, in Spain. Um, my research is mostly focused on issues related to water scarcity and drought. Thank you, everybody. Um, before we start uh, this panel discussion, I would like to say, say a few words uh, about the implementation. As we have uh, heard today, the SRIA 2.0 has been uh, developed and completed, and it has been a huge effort, both from the researchers, but also other stakeholders. And we have been really very successful in this uh, activity. But as you know, uh, all the strategies, if they are staying only on paper and they are not uh, implemented, uh, they are in a half way in a way. Uh, so I think it's really very uh, important in this respect to turn SRIA to real uh, actions. Uh, it is really important that we implement it efficiently, uh, proactively, having uh, cooperation for worldwide. Um, it is important that uh, these implementation activities result in high impact at all levels, national level, uh, regional level, EU-wide level, and even on global level. So I think that uh, now when the SRIA 2.0 has been uh, developed and completed and the next step will be the um, uh, planning of, of the implementation of this uh, strategy, uh, this discussion will be really important for the next uh, steps in water GBI. 
And I also hope that uh, you in the audience think about questions and comments while panelists are giving their statements. And I hope that this session can be uh, proactive or interactive. <clears throat> so, um, in a way, I have uh, two groups of questions, and uh, we will start from the first one, uh, which is um, uh, which uh, resources and actions are needed for implementing the SRIA 2.0, uh, and what would be the time frame or the optimum time frame for implementing this, this challenge in RD agenda? and what kind of instruments to be used. Uh, Rosa nicely presented us uh, one of the instruments, the joint calls, and there we have been really very successful. But probably need, we need also other kind of instruments in, in, in the future. So this is my first question, and I think that we could start from the researcher side and go then to the global or even greater side. Okay. So please. Yeah, thank you. Well, uh, as I said, I'm a researcher, so I, we tend to be critical, also constructive sometimes. Um, uh, I, will, I, will, I, I will start then by a disclaimer. I, I think that the work that is done here is extremely valuable for, for us, uh, for the researcher community. Um, I also think that what I have, I have, uh, I, I also think that what I have witnessed that thus far is very rep representative of what we are doing now in the research community and in uh, what is being uh, uh, pushed forward by other uh, research initiatives, funding initiatives, uh, such as Horizon 2020, for obvious reasons. Um, and therefore, I, I, I have also to say that there are some uh, weaknesses that are shared by by, by both of them. Um, I, I say this because uh, in research, and it's also our fault because we are conducting research in the end, uh, we tend to be uh, to focus lately very much on technical solutions. Uh, we have developed technical solutions to a very large extent. We are able of uh, developing, uh, we have come across models that are able to develop, uh, to study and to assess uh, abatement costs uh, with a very high detail at a microeconomic level, macroeconomic level, taking into account environmental issues, uh, so societal issues as well. Uh, they are increasingly comprehensive and complicated. Uh, the problem is that I feel that there's a still a uh, gap between the scientific discourse and uh, what policymakers are uh, doing in reality. Um, many researchers tend to think that this, is, uh, as, uh, this happens as a result of a lack of political will. Um, they say that politicians lack the will to implement the reforms that they are suggesting. I uh, tend to be more critical uh, to, uh, with our profession, and I think that uh, there's, uh, there's some research gap that we have failed to address. Um, I'm happy because while reading the, the SRI, I have realized that uh, some, some of these research gaps that I, I, I think that exist uh, are, are, are identified there. So um, I think that um, for during the last years uh, in the Water JPI, also Horizon 2020, other research programs, uh, we have tried to uh, to come up with solutions that, with technical solutions that increase water supply, that make ourselves more resilient against floods, but they fail to see what's the big elephant in the room. And, and basically is that uh, we, if we continue increasing supply, we will continue increasing demand. We continue increasing uh, um, flood protection. We will continue to build houses in the floodplain, for example. Um, so I think that in order to address that, we have some instruments uh, that they're available already. Uh, we have uh, increased our knowledge and our expertise on these instruments. Um, water markets, for example, they do exist in Europe. They have been developed in Spain. Uh, we have some cases there which can be useful and can be exported to other areas. Much research has been going on, on water markets, but also water charges. Uh, we, can't more, we can more or less predict what will happen if we introduce a charge or, or a market, uh, at, least, at least in some areas in which this has been a critical, uh, critical uh, uh, topic for research during the last years. The problem is that, uh, for in some cases, for obvious reasons, they are not implemented. And I think that 
Uh, in this Rias mentioned, uh, there, this is all to a series of barriers that continue to exist and continue to uh, prevent the implementation of some instruments that we already know in research, uh, I, I, I won't say very well, but we know, and we know what to expect. Uh, the treatment has been advanced to a very large extent, and we are in a position in, we, in which we can start to introduce them. But this requires some other type of research uh, that we are in position to, to, to address right now as well which is related to things like uh, institutional barriers, institutional economics, uh, institutional research, transaction costs, and so on and so forth. Um, and I, the, 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 the main message I wanted to convey, and with this I, I will finish, um, is that if we manage to, uh, in some of these, uh, of the water API calls, to, uh, not to focus only, of course, but to have like, uh, um, to give more relevance to this type of research, to, the, to, to, build, to, to build the gap, to bridge the gap between uh, what has been already done, what's, what's in the corridor, for example. I mean, a lot of research, of technical research, and uh, the policies that are actually implemented. We may come up with many solutions that are already exist. We may start to implement many solutions that already exist, and we may reduce the time frame uh, in which we could uh, address the, the challenges that are present in the industry. Yeah. Thank you, Yonis. Uh, hi. Uh, so I want to discuss not so much the implementation of, of these tools and, and management things, but a little bit as a, a, a researcher developing or running a project, some of the issues that are concern me about actually building some of the tools and, and processes that we need to do. And I, I want to start by focusing on sort of our mantra, which is up here, and it says, water challenges for a changing world. And I really want to focus on the changing world and r how that relates to management. Because basically what I think a lot of what the JPI projects are doing that I know of are trying to develop tools to improve water management in a changing world. But when you think about what t these tools are, they're often models or some sort of, and in models are usually embedded empirical relationships, and those empirical relationships are based on the world today, or the world as it was, not as it is changing. So the, the, the key point I want to make here is that even though we're developing these tools, we, and we should do develop these tools, but at the same time, we have to always be aware that they're, being, they're changing, they need to be monitored, they need to be checked, and the, the, the time frame is that it never ends, in my mind. Uh, there, we always have to be thinking that we have to be reevaluating our tools to try to improve them because of this changing world that we live in. So that was the first point I wanted to make. Let me see what else I have here. Uh, also related to the changing world, there was a lot of talk yesterday about uh, the importance of extreme events. And I would also argue that even less extreme, but sort of uh, short-lived events or episodic events are also extremely important in shaping water quality. And it's only as we measure more and more frequently and more and more continually that we're able to appreciate the importance of episodic events think that in, in shaping water quality and water processes. And those, the drivers of those events are also changing with the changing climate. And I think there really is important that, that we think that a priority is to continually develop and improve our measurement capabilities and monitoring capabilities of these extreme events or episodic events also. Uh, the third thing I wanted to talk about was that the world is really complex when we start thinking not only of water quantity, but water quality, especially in relation to climate change. So, and I'm just going to do, like I, I, I always like to tell people that when you build a model, the first thing you do is mental modeling, not anything else. And so if we think about things like changes in air temperature, uh, and that's something we clearly know is going to occur now. Uh, if you think what that does, and, and I think about water systems, I mean, I just, I wrote a few things down yesterday when I was thinking about this. It does things like it changes the timing of stream flow and stream runoff nutrient inputs to lakes and reservoirs. It affects soil freezing, which changes runoff 
between surface and subsurface pathways. It changes nutrient loss, changes the rate of evapotranspiration in the watersheds, evaporation from the reservoirs and lakes, changes the rates of soil organic matter decomposition. It changes the antecedent wetness conditions in the, res in the watersheds, which affect runoff processes. Uh, it changes the petitioning between surface and subsurface runoff. It changes the duration and the strength and the timing of, of thermal stratification in the lakes and reservoirs, which in turn affect nutrient availability, light availability to the organisms in the reservoirs. And that, that affects things like the duration of algal blooms and also the relative importance of factors decomposing and changing the, the, sort, the uh, composition of dissolved organic material in lakes and reservoirs. And both of those things are important for drinking water components. The reason I listed all these things is just to say how complicated this is. And that's not to say that we shouldn't try to develop tools that are important to, to make these predictions uh, in, in regards to water quality. But we should also remember that it is a really complicated issue and there is a real need for basic research on all these processes because the tools will never be better than the understanding of the processes that we put into them. So I, I, I would say that certainly maybe the JPI isn't the only place where, or, or, or a, a major funder of, of basic research, but I think there is a place for basic research in the JPI, and I think we should keep that in mind. And I have one more thing. This is a little bit more practical, I guess. But as, as a developer of a, a recent project, I was surprised a little bit, I guess, that it was really difficult to get water utilities to participate in the project. And one of the reasons for that, I think, is even though it's just a political, it's not really a, an economic thing, but it's a political thing, that water utilities are stressed financially. They don't, they've been told to cut back. They don't have the staff, and it's really hard to bring on people. You know, I was hoping when we started this that we could get water utilities to make a 50% contribution to the cost of things, and I gave up on that pretty quickly. And I realized just getting people to contribute their time was a major sell. So I think that's something also that we should be considering here is maybe there's a need either to push governments to provide more funding so water utilities can participate more freely in these projects because clearly they would like to. They just aren't able to. And or else that we should be providing that directly in some way. So those were the things I would like to say. Thank you very much, Don. And then uh, Panos representing the European Commission, it's really interesting to hear your comment on what kind of uh, resources and actions are really needed to implement this SRIA 2.1. Uh, yes, th thank you. Um, I, I would like also to put some uh, personal comments on, on, on this issue, but perhaps also to, to have a more constructive discussion to react also to some of the issues also raised before in order to, to open also the discussion. Um, with regards, I think, the, the implementation, I think from our point um, is clear, we need also to really also find a way structuring also this cooperation. Uh, this is, again, this was repeatedly said, uh, European funding represents a very small percentage of the national funding. So even more than 10%, you know, of the overall uh, EU spending, for instance, in, in, in the water. So the question is how to mobilize also all the other additional resources. And in mobilizing this, is then how to better also uh, build also the complementarities and not, you know, making things to, to, to repeat. Mm. And, and this is something which is perhaps um, linked also with um, uh, some comments about, you know, the science, the policy that, you know, the policy people are not uh, hearing and it's difficult perhaps to communicate. I think that if we are in a position also to, as a scientist also to show also the, this complementarity, I think this is perhaps is better also to convince the politicians that there is something, a, a cumulative knowledge which is coming, you know, all together, that it is not only 
individual, you know, uh, egoism, I would say, just to have money for a particular research area. Because we have to, to, to open. We have to be clear how things are, are, are also uh, uh, done and how budgets also are located at the regional, national. Uh, there is no always as a, ra a rationale behind. There are also different other parameters. But I think if we, as a scientist, together, to show that there is a kind of uh, um, uh, combination and way, you know, to come uh, better and to avoid also the, the duplications and the and the uh, um, uh, also and strengthen more the complementarity, I think, will be very important. Another issue, I think, which is very relevant also for the implementation, I think, is the fact that we have also at a certain point um, to really make a real assessment. Very often we have, you know, activities under horizon. We have activities under the member states. We have activities under the, the GPI. How to better, you know, create a way that, you know, at a certain point we are in a position to say a kind of a state of the art. I take the example of the IPCC, and I will plead for that. Are we in a position as a, for instance, a water community to make something similar like the IPCC is doing? So in a certain period of time, coming all together and consolidating also the current knowledge, saying what do we know with the confidence? We say what is not known, and then also identify areas which also will require also more attention. Because I think there uh, and there, and then of course we can also um, um, come also together with the um, uh, the. Uh, um, the, the policy, uh, the, the policy ne uh, needs. Another also issue that I would like also to, 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 to show, because I think this is very important, I think this, all the research that we are doing is, of course, we will always, we will need to, to increase our knowledge. I think this is evident. There is no uh, final end. Huh? Knowledge always will be needed. But do we need also, uh, do we have also particular attention to translating this knowledge in, in, in some words which can be easily also understood by, also by the policy makers. And I think this is it's not, it's not a, a, an, easy, an easy task. Some scientists, they have also these uh, uh, capacities and they can do it, but we have to be honest. Uh, some scientists even are not interested on that. They are just uh, uh, looking on, on more the depth knowledge. And I think this is something that we have also to, um, uh, to look. And um, as I, you mentioned also, I think this changing world, and I think this is really is, is very, very important. I think um, we should also um, stop looking you know, the, the, the water only from the water point of view. I think we have to broad our attention. We have also to, um, uh, to look also um, water as a factor, for instance, of economic development. And in this context, I think this will be more better uh, to um, uh, um, uh, give also more high relevance and also acknowledgement that the research which is we are doing, instead, in addition of increasing also the knowledge, can also have also practical implication. And this is perhaps the way that then to um, help also the stakeholders, like you mentioned, utilities also. To, um, uh, to, to be more uh, aware on, on, on this. As I said, this is, a, 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 in my presentation early morning, this is an area which is, the, this is, we know that it's fragmented and there is a kind of a big risk aversion. So utilities I have a completely different um, uh, economic model and they are not, that's why they are not interesting. So this is up to us to try also to see this uh, um, interplay, you know, of the these th different also public-private policies also, and trying also to, to, to work together. And I give an example. I was recently in um, a conference organized by Financial Times on water, where there were plenty of um, uh, um, industries, in particular also um, uh, industries working on food, uh, on uh, companies, you know, beverage and all this type of thing. And I was astonished to um, <coughs> understand there that these also companies are not anymore dealing with, for instance, wastewater treatment. 
They prefer, for instance, to go and with farmers and to go up uh, uh, front uh, to, the, to the valley also and try to build, you know, on best agricultural uh, management uh, practices and strategies to reduce also the pollution, to avoid also the cost of the, of the, of the pollution. I was astonishing that this is uh, something that companies also are doing. So this is a way that we need also to try also to uh, come more closer together. So I stop. Thank you. Thank here. you, Panos. And then uh, Mr. Helmut Löwe. The floor is yours. Yes, thank you, Laura. So just to come to the uh, remark of the of Dionisio. So I have also been a researcher, but this is tw more than 25 years ago. But nevertheless, I'm still critical. So also as a program owner, you have to be critical because you spend your taxpayers' money, and this has to be viewed critical. So I'm aware of the question, Laura. Don't get nervous. Uh, I will answer <laughs> it <laughs> after the statement. Uh, um, no, just joking. But you allow me some preliminary remarks, please, because. I think something which should be reminded on here in these discussion is that we spend a lot of money for the research on biodiversity just to keep the variety of plants and animals around the globe. Um, and we should keep in mind that there is a biodiversity of our water systems within Europe, within the different member states. So we are not supposed to homogenize everything. Um, and I will come back to this in the end. And I may give you some numbers for Germany, just that you get an impression to your own country how different the situations even around Europe are. Um, so just some numbers on, on water use. So of our total amount of water use, we spend about 15%, 1,5% for the private households. And we spend 85% on our industry water use. And of this 85%, it's two thirds for the cooling of our power plants. And water use in agriculture is not at all a topic in Germany. It's not even counted in the statistics because it's less than 0. Point something, uh, 0. Point something percentage. So just if you always see these slides, 70% agricultural water use around the world, I think it was about 30% in Europe. So in Germany, it's not a topic at all. Um, and the other story is the efficiency of water using or water supply. So we teach our children to save water not because it's few of it in, in Germany, but because it's expensive. Mm -hmm. So if they are too small, we keep telling them that they help the poor people in Africa by not using too much water. If they are grown up and understand the uh, story, then we tell them, look, we pay as a private person, I pay about five euros per cubic meter for the water, which is about half for the drinking water supply and half for the wastewater treatment. So this is a main driver in Germany, and it has been said also during the day that this may be a uh, raisement of awareness necessary in some other places of the world, that water may be a public good, but it doesn't mean automatically that it's, it's for free. Some numbers on the research funding, because I always think this is also important to put the things we are discussing here today uh, and in the JPI in general in relation to the whole story. So in Germany, we spend 84 billion euros per year for the research funding. This is all research. So this is not water research. This is all research on the total, 84 billions. And only one third of this is public money. And two thirds of this is industry money. So the industry itself is the main um, driver in our research. Um, and I don't say that public Funding is not needed, but just, as I said, to put it in relation to the story we are talking about today. And in our opinion, innovation is business. So innovation is mainly industry-driven, and that means industry in many cases, in our funding, even in the water uh, uh, research funding, they are not even interested in, in public money because this means automatically that this has to make public what, what uh, is their project on. So that also we should keep in mind when we talk about the implementation 
of uh, our Sharia at all. So there is a lot of money around from people which are not at all interested to discuss with us what they are doing. Um, and the last point on this, uh, or the second last point on the industry, so you can read in a lot of papers from the Commission and from other guys uh, about the European industry. So, sorry, there is no European industry. There are French enterprises, Spanish enterprises, UK enterprises, Finnish, German, whatever, and it, if it comes to business, they are competitors. So, if we keep uh, talking, what can we do for the European industry, this may be nice, but it's not, it's not the reality if it comes to, to business. And just also regarding industry, another perhaps interesting difference, uh, I may just have chosen the, the French example. France, you have these big water supply companies. In Germany, we don't have them at all. So we have mainly uh, small and medium enterprises, SMEs, uh, regarding the water sector if it comes to components. And we have the water supply and the wastewater treatment mainly in public hands in the public sector. So it's our communities and municipalities who treat uh, our wastewater and, and, and care about our water supply. Now I may just say a few words to the Sriya, which has been uh, told also as being heavy. I don't know where Patrick is, there he is. So it's, it's very heavy, I agree. It's 105 pages, and I'm very impressed that even the introduction, which means the short version, is 45 pages, which is also a lot, I may say. And I just may, may show you, it's, this is our, uh, from our ministry, our strategy on the water research for the years 2012 to 17, 18, something like this and it's 15 pages, one five. So our intention was to keep it short and simple, just to give the people the chance to, to, to read it all and, and to perhaps to understand. So I, I'm not complaining, so I big compliments to the crew who did the, the SRIA, but so this is why we are talking about now what to do with this amount of topics of interesting things you listed there. So I, in the plane to the flight here, I would like, like to, 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 to count the bullet points we have in there on the different topics. Now I have to admit I somehow stopped uh, when I came to 80. Um, it's a lot more, so I don't know if somebody counted it, and, and, but anyway. So, and there we exactly now got the answer to the question mm -hmm. how to implement this. So. I agree that it's more easy to have an agenda or a strategy for one country, as we do from our ministry, than to have it for the EU with meanwhile 28 countries or 20 participants in, in the JPI water. So, but nevertheless, so I think somebody has to take the duty just to shrink these bullets, amazing amount of bullets, just to the topics we should work on together, and there I come back to the start of my talk. This will be difficult enough because, as I said, so we have different uh, stories uh, in each country. And I may just, uh, if I still have the minute louder, otherwise you just have to switch off my microphone, uh, give you the five most relevant topics on research. I'm talking only on research in, in water now um, in, in, in Germany. So the number one on our agenda is pollutants and pathogens. So you, think, uh, you see we don't have a quantity problem, but we have a quality problem on, on some uh, waters around Germany. And you may have followed the political discussions on the first, uh, on, on the fourth treatment step for our wastewater treatment, taking off the, the, the micropollutants and, and pathogens, which is a very, how to say, controversial uh, political discussions for the time being, because also this is coming to costs. And on the one hand, we are just making it more efficient every year with, with our wastewater treatment. On the other hand, we have extra treatment steps which make it more costly. So this is always the a balance you have to follow. The other political topic on the water is the, the phosphorus recycling in Germany. So our um, government has written in its uh, coalition papers that until the year 2025, uh, it is not allowed anymore to bring the sewage sludge to the fields. 
So we have about 2 million tons of sludge uh, every year. Half of it is brought out in agriculture on the fields, and this will be forbidden uh, within a few years, uh, connected with the um, uh, recycling of, of phosphorus, which has to be uh, done with this sludge. Not only burning is allowed, but you have to recycle the phosphorus. So this is the second big story. And as I said, in general, it's efficiency. We had it before in the, in the last panel discussion on the asset management, which is also a big story in Germany, uh, which is always related to costs, as I said in the beginning. So we are somehow uh, always talking about efficiency, be it energy, be it water, be it life cycle of, of, of uh, all this infrastructure, always regarding not raising the cost anymore for the um, German people paying the water. And the last topic, perhaps, uh, which is mainly a thing maybe of Germany or its neighbors, is the nitrate in the groundwater, which is getting more and more problem because agriculture is just putting too much nitrate on the ground. Um, and so just I just gave you these examples to see because I think many of you may think, oh, in our country this is not at all interesting. We have some other problems. And there we are back so what I said, now it's the task, it's, it's the main task to identify the topics from our SRIA where we can all agree somehow on to go on. And I just may say with the last words that I don't see the JPI alone as the one implementing these topics via calls or whatever. The colleagues from the governing board may, may remember the discussions we had in the last uh, meetings that I don't think it's the main task of the JPI to be, as I always call it, a call machine, so that we have every year one call on different topics. But in fact, uh, I think a JPI should be much more. It should be information exchange that we learn about each other, what is the funding structure in our countries regarding water search, what is the water infrastructure problems in our countries. And I think all this should be more on our agenda in the JPI. And the three R topics perhaps are more focused or should be more focused on uh, Horizon 2020 or other framework programs funded by the EU or even our national programs where this somehow also is, a, I don't know how you call it in English, a closed circle, because we did give our input, of course, to the three R because on the topics mm. we would have we would like to see there, and then we take the three are back as an argument at home to say, look, uh, this is an argument to do a research in this topic. So this should be enough for the time being. Thank you. Thank you, Helmut. And then we will have the so-called global That's view right. to, to water domain. Please. That's definitely. right. So I'll start by giving you a small introduction maybe to the Global Water Research Coalition, which we also call GWRC, um, so that I'm representing today. And um, the GWRC is a platform for global cooperation for the generation and exchange of knowledge. And it was established in 2002. And it represents 13 members, um, and those members are mainly research organisations um, that fund uh, national um, research um, for water and wastewater issues, so covering the, the water cycle. And the members uh, mainly come from the US, Canada, South Africa, uh, Australia, Singapore through the Pub Public Utilities Board, and uh, Europe, with uh, six members in Europe. Um, so today I'm very honoured that I've been invited to this conference and this panel um, because really the mission of the GWRC and the mission of Water GPI are essentially uh, the same, apart that it's a very different scale, of course. Um, it is really about partnering and working together uh, in a coordinated manner um, and tackle, tackling water-related issues and work towards a common goal um, and in a more concerted way. And I think it's very important that we do that to avoid duplication. Um, of efforts. But we need to take a long-term approach. It's not something that you know, happens very quickly and we need to be very realistic about time frames. And I was very pleased to see in the um, new agenda or, or, or the innovation agenda 2.0 that um, the agenda covers very much or 80% of the GWRC agenda as well uh, and the same research priorities. So I can see collaboration opportunities definitely um, so that we avoid duplication and efforts and that we direct our research funds in a, in a better way, a more coordinated way. 
In terms of actions uh, to implement the SRIA uh, or Agenda 2.0, um, I found that knowledge hubs work really well. Um, we have, and I've seen that in your agenda as one of the ways um, researchers can network uh, better together. And I found that knowledge hubs work well on topics where uh, different members or partners might already be starting research. So we are starting one on microplastics, for example, um, where we have a workshop um, actually this weekend. Um, where we look at microplastic, what are the members doing, um, where are the synergies, who's doing what, you know, which methodologies are being used um, by the different members. And instead of duplicating, it's really about sharing. So you might be sending samples or doing intralab uh, comparisons and, and not duplicating the methods. So you really, um, you know, share the, the methods, you share the result, uh, research results and the data and you work together, again, minimising um, the research efforts. And that's worked really well, um, Knowledge Hubs. Um, it's a great tool, and I can see maybe a possibility on collaborating with Water GPI. Um, other things is common outputs, is preparing fact, fact sheets, white papers together. Um, that works really well, having an independent voice um, and having a real tangible output that can be used by policymakers, regulators, um, or the Commission even. Joint calls is another possibility um, that I can see on specific topics and identification of emerging issues. I saw that on the agenda. Um, and the GWRC does that um, twice a year, is looking at emerging issues uh, globally uh, across the membership um, that need to be tackled quickly. So microplastics, antibiotic resistance came up, but when e Ebola came out, it was very quick to say, okay, is this an issue for the water industry? Is it an issue for the wastewater operator? Can we write a white paper? What do we know? How can we work together? So it's really about a quick turnaround. And this is why it's, you know, it works quite well. We're, we're small, but we get very quick actions and fast actions. So yeah, so that's really what I wanted to say today. So it's about, that I can see collaboration that we're obviously much smaller, but um, you know, some members um, of the GWRC are also involved in water GPI. So it should be quite easy to do. Thank you very much, Stephanie. And then Margit Noll, who represents another GPI, the Urban Europe. What is your experience how to implement the SRIA? So let me say that I'm really glad that I was invited to, to this event today because it gave me the opportunity to see how another JPI <laughs> is developing and how you developed your strategy, what kind of struggles you had. And I just can say, um, you're not alone. <laughs> we, we had quite the same experience. From what Enrique summarized, it was exactly the same that we uh, experienced in the, last, in the first phase. And I also see quite a lot of commonalities in the way how you found some solutions and developed some approaches. So I think there is a lot that we have in common in, in the way how we try to set up such an exercise. And uh, basically, um, besides some, some thematic priorities that we might share, uh, we have five thematic priorities in our research and innovation agenda as well. So five mm. seems to be the magic number of today. Uh, there are quite some commonalities, and maybe we can look into those later. Uh, but what I, what I think, uh, yeah, I would like to phrase it more in terms of questions. We are now into, we launched our research and innovation agenda in October last year. So we are quite in the same phase. We are now setting up different instruments and different implementation measures ourselves and raising a lot of questions to our member countries, to our partners. And I think we have quite of these questions in common and I would like just to raise them. Right? Um, I, I see the, the research and innovation agenda as, an, as a living document and it seems that you just finished the, the version 2.0 and you're now about to taking up the next phase. Uh, I think this is important. There are so many challenges ahead, so many topics pop up on the short term that somehow need to be addressed. And I think it's important to reflect those continuously and come up with a revision or a more precise development, more close, specific priorities that need to be selected for the different calls. So seeing that as a living docu document, I think, is really important. It is demanding because it needs so much effort of all the community to, to meet, to discuss, to write some papers, to continuously lead that kind of strategic debate. The main, the main issue I would like to address is related to instruments. And I would like to question if we have the right instruments in place to implement the JPI. Uh, what I learned today, and I think it's quite similar to the debate that we have in JPI in Europe, we, we are valid, uh, experienced in 
developing technological innovations. We know how to play that game. We have our research communities. They are spending efforts together in cooperation with industry, small and big ones. And then we're about to implementing these in terms of procurement or in terms of products or services. So we know how to do that. But do we have instruments that allow us to translate research into policy? Mm -hmm. And do we have instruments that allow us to support society when it comes to different kinds of implementation measures that we need to do together? So we don't. Maybe you have, we don't in the urban context. So we are about to, to develop instruments, um, frameworks for future research projects to involve those stakeholders. And it's not about lobbying. I want to comment on that from the morning session. It's not about lobbying. It's about sharing, committing, and engaging of different stakeholders in the very early stage. And this does not contradict fundamental science or basic research, however you want to call that, but it's about how do we define the main research questions? How do we involve the different kinds of stakeholders, policy makers, might that be city administration, water companies, supply industry, whoever it might be, how do we involve them already in an early phase of our research and priority setting? And so what we try to do is we try to engage them in different phases and quite intensively. And this is not only to understand their topics, but to raise the commitment. Because we can't do, implement our agenda on our own, um, looking into the urban issue, that would be absurd, right? So uh, everything is on the very local level at the end of the day, so we need to go there. And that means that we need to talk to the cities, and you might need to talk to those administrating all the, the water issue or industry. Um, so how do we find new mechanisms to involve these stakeholders? And how can we reflect those needs in our funding instruments? And when we take that a step further, then it's not only about doing the research projects, and I appreciate very much the other statements before. In a way, that's, the joint calls are important, and they help us to raise visibility, and they help us to work together. Uh, but then we need to do something with the results. And at the moment, we don't have a platform for that. And neither on the European level, maybe somehow on the national level, but basically not on a transnational level. So we need to generate platforms. Uh, at least we try to do that in a way to learn what the outcome of the project is. How, what can we learn from them? And how can we translate these research results into policy or mm -hmm. other kinds of actions? And, and this is demanding because we don't have the frame right, right now to do that. And you need to raise awareness in, 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 in the level of the, of the decision makers and the policy makers to come there and sit together with the scientists and do that. So I think we, the main issue is how can we set up these new frameworks that allows really to benefit from that kind of, of opportunities that the JPIs raise. And I'm very much looking forward to discuss that also with you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Margaret. I have another question, and if you have, want to reflect the, the other panelists' comments, that is also uh, possible. The next, uh, or the second question is, is um, from your point of view, or from your institution perspective, um, what are the opportunities to, for accelerating the research and innovation um, calendar? So, uh, we would really like to hear what you will take on board. What are you able to do to enhance the implementation of uh, SRIA? So may I ask uh, quite a short, short comments? No, please. Yeah, I'll keep it short. Uh, it would be kind of a follow-up of what Maggie just said, because I think it, was, uh, it went straight to the point. I have I had the chance to talk to some colleagues in my institution and other institutions as well uh, in some meetings we had before this one, and they all pointed out at the difficulty of creating of building up a consortium in the mm -hmm. um, in the water JPI, and they they also they, they highlighted the the different eligibility eligibility rules that exist in the for different member states participating in the in the in the water JPI. Um, I mean, I'm probably not the right person to criticize that because, I mean, I, I think, after, especially after seeing the presentation by Mr. Playan, I think it's a miracle that Water JPA made it this far and with this success. But now that we have come to this point, uh, I mean, there's always room for improvement. And I will say that if we have managed to agree to 
uh, an, an agenda. We have managed to agree uh, some specific topics that we need to address. Uh, it wouldn't be that difficult, or maybe it will be the next step, maybe it's very difficult, very challenging, I don't know, uh, to agree on the, some sort of eligibility rules, uh, minimum eligibility rules, because they depend from country to country. In some cases, they are not uh, available in English, uh, so it's up to the other partner to check them. Uh, in some cases, maybe they don't do that. Uh, and then the whole consortium falls apart. So that's a challenge when you are going to invest part of your work, quite a large part of your work on writing a, a proposal. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, following up what, what Maggie said before, uh, one of the barriers that we have found, for example, uh, that some of my colleagues have found, for example, was that uh, in some cases, uh, some institutions that are key actors um, play key roles in water management. Uh, were not eligible to, to participate. So, for example, it's quite difficult to develop a case study in an area in which you cannot count on the river basin district, for example, uh, or the regional, the local regional environmental agency. And that's, I mean, that those are actors that should be, I mean, at least from my point of view, should be involved in the in the effort to change to to address the challenges that we we have in this area. Yeah. That's it. Thank you. And then, Dan. Um, I think it's a really interesting question. I'm not really sure I, I can answer it. Um, I, I think one thing that struck me very much when we were talking now was this, when, as I think about the JPI model, I find that it, I think it is actually a very effective way it, to let uh, multiple countries def working together to define research goals, but allowing individual countries to fund the research. I find that as a very effective model. Um, the question is, I guess, how do you then take this next step, which requires those same countries to implement those things in a, in a, in a similar way? And uh, that I don't know, but I think it's a really valuable thing to think about. Um, on the local level, I think from our project, the, the key to implementation was to involve the stakeholders as much as possible. And we really felt it was impo important to, to bring in some water utilities and have them involved in, in the project very, very directly. And not only just to come to the meetings and, and say what they think, but also to allow us to use their data and to try to provide feedback as to how we might improve their uh, decision making. So, thank you. I think that um, regarding also the ways also to accelerate um, also the, this um, implementation and have also some results, I, I will situate two elements. I think the first element will be uh, the implementation in terms of you know procedures and um, discussion that also that um, previous also speakers also mentioned. I think that um, we have to be um, clear there that if you would like also to improve the acceleration, we will, as also Helmut mentioned, we will have also to address also this institutional, also national uh, member states, you know, also policies, the, um, the implementation strategies, and try to, to find a way to see to what extent there is a way also to, to come in closer. And I think this is the the most easier way, I think, to, to have uh, more streamlined procedures, you know, and to, um, to accelerate this, this procedure. Uh, with regards to the implementation in terms also of the, the res implementation of the results, because I think that there is also the other also point is, of course, there this is the involvement of, of stakeholders is, is very, very, very important. But I think we have also to build this in, in, in the beginning. I think in the early phase, even uh, researchers, when they propose, they have perhaps not select, you know, the stakeholders opportunistically, but try also to have also a kind of analysis that will help them also to identify those stakeholders that they have already the structure or the way, you know, to build uh, um, the next steps, uh, you know, and uh, to, to, to find for instance, the possibility. Uh, give the example for in, in some southern Mediterranean countries where still, for instance, regional funds are available. Mm -hmm. For me, I think this is also one good way of accelerating if you could eventually, as a researcher, also try to in, be in touch with Im, uh, implementing organization of these regional funds and trying also to, to build synergies in such a way that there are always possibilities to, uh, 
um, to accelerate. I will remember, this is an anecdotal, when some years ago we had the national experts, you know, we have this scheme in, in our um, uh, in the European Commission, and he came for a regional authority in a country who was also in charge of um, uh, managing also the leader, which is a kind of agricultural uh, urban related program. <laughs> And when he found, you know, some results that were performed, he found also the way to convince his links, you know, to implement this type of, of mm. action because we have selected the right type, the, the right people in the right moment. I think this is the way also to, to look for. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, I should have mentioned in my introduction also that I'm uh, responsible for the two funding priorities with our ministry, the sustainable water management, the one with a 15 pages strategy, and the IWRM, integrated water resource management. We do calls in those uh, measures and one prerequisite for those who want to apply for a project uh, to give a pre-proposal is that it's science plus partners from industry, plus stakeholders. So only if these three are together in one joint project, uh, then they are allowed to apply. So, uh, Donald, we are already doing this, uh, what you propose, so, but exactly for the same reason why you propose it, just to make sure Nothing against the scientists. As I said some years ago, I have been also one. You are full of ideas. So that's your topic, that's your task, uh, to have good ideas, to have new ideas. And then the first hurdle we put on the way between your idea and the realization of a project is that you find a partner from uh, practice who says, yes, I could imagine that this idea in some years or whenever uh, may be relevant for us. So only then, if you pass this hurdle, then you can apply for a funding. So this is done, and this is exactly the reason what we're discussing now, just to make sure that these things uh, arrive as quick as possible in reality, I may call it. Um, and in addition to that, we are also in close cooperation within the German funding system with the organizations from the wastewater treatment uh, guys and the uh, drinking water supply guys who gives us their feedback, what is their needs for the future. And I don't know how, how in your countries, but in Germany, this is a very conservative business. Um, even drinking water supply as the wastewater treatment because they say if my plant is running well uh, we should not change uh, too much uh, on it and the only thing you get them is then as I said before about efficiency about cost uh, and then you get them into these projects so we are aware of that and we think uh, that we should accelerate that by doing by inclu including the partners into the projects and just to give you another number, so when I came uh, a few years ago in this um, area, they told me that it needs in Germany normally from a research result until it arrives in a standard or a norm between 10 and 20 years. So mm -hmm. I couldn't believe it, but it is exactly like this, as I said, due to the conservative um, discussions on this. So we are hopefully to, to, to accelerate this in the sense I just mentioned, and perhaps this is also a model for the uh, European funding in future. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Stephanie, please. Yes, now I will be quite brief. Um, the GWRC is not a partner of Water GPI, but that doesn't stop, um, you know, collaboration opportunities. So I can see us, you know, sharing our priorities or at least yearly being in contact on, you know, what, what are we working on, where's the duplication or the, the overline, and um, maybe even, yeah, work together on workshops or you know, fact sheets or, or calls. So, you know, quite open for that collaboration. I think it's only a win-win and a positive outcome, really, for us and, and Water GPI. Thank you, and then Margit. Yeah, t t two remarks, one, one on the general level of JPIs and one related to urban Europe in particular. Um, I think we need to, uh, in, JPIs have been set up to accelerate research and innovation as such. I think this was one of the main intentions when the Commission introduced the instrument. And for that, um, my, my feeling is that we need to better take use of the national competences, priorities, 
and strength that we have and connect them on the transnational level. I think this is an advantage that we have as JPIs, how we are set up based on national programs, on national priorities, on national strategies, and linking them, connecting them uh, on, the, on the European transnational level. I think we need to learn how to better take use of that. And that would help a lot in order to, to use already knowledge that has been generated in our countries. Also on a regional level, I think the, the um, water is, is the same as, as the urban context. Even when we cooperate on a transnational global level, it always comes down to the very regional or local implementation, right? So uh, we can't discuss urban issues without going to, into a city or a neighborhood. And I think the same goes then for, for the water issue. You need to go to a city or a river or any kind of, of water resource in a, in a concrete level to really implement that. So this balance of very regional, local implementation, knowledge, expertise, and connecting them on a European scale, I think is very attractive and we should take better use of that. Uh, when it comes to JPI Urban Europe, I think there are a couple of issues that we could tackle together. Both of us have our research and innovation agendas in place. You have a multi-annual call agenda, we have one. Uh, we are now trying to concretize that in terms of making choices out of a very broad research agenda. And I think this, this opens a lot of opportunities. One of our priorities looks into um, urban resilience and, and sustainability. Uh, this is naturally given that we could talk about those. Uh, but beyond that, it's about urban governance and participation, water issue, one of those issues we need to uh, consider when it comes to urban administration and management. But again, it goes further when we talk about welfare issues or about a vibrant economies. So water goes into those in some extent as well. So I think it would be really great to talk about that. For this, it was really good to be here and, and learn more about the content and your procedures. And I think we'll find the ways and opportunities to take that further. Thank you. And now we have uh, around five minutes time for, for your questions and your comments. And uh, if we can be a little bit flexible with the time schedule, maybe we have a little more time. So please. Thank you. My name is Torjan Larsen. I'm from the Water Institute, uh, the Norwegian Institute for Water Research. Uh, two simple uh, wishes and recommendations. First of all, I want to say that there's the three are 2.0 is, is very nice. It covers most of the important topics. It includes, takes back the environment and ecological issues in addition to the, to the water industry. Um, so that's very good. Um, please note that the format you have used in the previous calls has been quite successful, quite popular. And maybe it's not necessary to change so much for the next calls. Um, Maybe you don't need to dilute what you already have with too many new instruments. So stick to what you have. Very many researchers find the, the JPI format of relatively few partners relatively easy compared to Horizon 2020 at least. So it gives many, many more people and research groups the possibility to collaborate across Europe while the Horizon 2020 has become a monster that you need special expertise in coordinating. So keep it simple, use the model you have, and if you manage to make it, of course, streamline even more across uh, the different countries, that would be useful. Uh, one other useful thing would be if it would be possible to have a long-term plan for what calls, what topics would be in different calls. I think then you will have a bit fewer applications for each call, because then people will see, okay, I will wait till next year because I see that my topic is covered next time. I think that will make it, um, you will get more or fewer proposals, but maybe more good proposals. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Keep coming. And the next one, please. Oh, Genevieve from the European Network of Basin Organizations. I'd like to suggest to the Water GPI to include uh, PCP, pre-commercial procurement, uh, as a new tool uh, for supporting research driven by the public authorities, public utilities, based in organizations, because it seems that it could be a very nice way to bridge the last mile between uh, research, result, and uh, something which match 
100% the needs of the uh, uh, client, of the users. Uh, this is a way not to support directly the researchers, but to support the, the, the users to drive the research. Thank you. Thank you. And is there still, yes, there on the back? Thank you, Leonardo Piccinetti again from uh, Be Water Projects. Um, in our uh, studies where we tackled the fund the agency problem, in particular for uh, climate adaptation and uh, river basin issues, um, I'm agree that uh, one of the key issues is the is the problem of the joint call in terms of uh, bureaucracy, uh, the administrative, the language issues, the evaluation process. This is a very interesting to see how the new concept of the research uh, strategic agenda will be implemented in the future with the other GPI because there will be a communalities of uh, to tackle these obstacles. So this is a, a important point. Also, we would like to create this uh, opportunity with our project uh, funded by uh, FP7. Thank you. And uh, here is the next question. Yes. Or comment. Yes, I have a question spe specifically for Helmut Löwe, who very <laughs> eloquently stated that there is no European industry, there is only national industries. And I'm afraid he's right. But I would like to hear from him whether he considers this as something positive, negative, neutral, and perhaps perhaps Looking back from it from the perspective of German's history, Germany became a, a nation state only in 1871. How long did it take the different German industries, regional industries, to say, no, I'm not uh, uh, from this Bundesland, but I'm a German <laughs> industry? Thank you. Yes, dear Dirk. So. Where should I begin? So I, first, I, I suggest this neutral. So I, regarding the European uh, industry, so I just what I wanted to mention is that this has become uh, a phrase in, in nearly all of poli all of our political papers. You know, where it's uh, we are doing this and that for the European industry. So neutral, there is none. We all agree on on this. Um, yes, and the other question uh, is more a philosophical one. Uh, you know, the German state uh, had its time to develop, and we were also with the Roman Empire, Christliches uh, Reich, Deutscher Nationen, so I can't tr translate this into English. So this is um, history. So I don't know if there will be the time if there is really an ownership of enterprises who say, yes, we are all European. So I don't know. So I'm too old to, to, to uh, see this, I'm afraid. But I don't say uh, this will not happen someday. But for the time being, as I said, we should be careful in putting things uh, in phrasing which is not the truth for the time being. Seems to me the problem is that you're too old, but yet you're too young. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, good. Then I will, uh, before ending, uh, try to wrap up what has been uh, said. Uh, first of all, I think that. Um, mm, the panel uh, enhanced uh, the gap between the scientific and, and, and policy or scientific community and policy makers that we need to have some kind of a way how to speak the same language with uh, politicians so that um, the scientific results will be um, uh, turned into an innovations. Um, also, uh, there were uh, stated that it's really important to understand that the world is uh, changing in a very um, fast way, and we have to reevaluate our methods and our procedures. So, in a way, it's also a, um, in a very living process where we need all the time to reevaluate our processes. 
then there was uh, raised a very important, from my point of view, I think it's a very important point that uh, how to have a balance between uh, so-called basic research and uh, more innovation research, because both are needed and uh, what the GPI can be a, a platform <coughs> for both of those. Um, and one important point is that uh, as this kind of an, um, international cooperation or European level cooperation is really important and in, in many state statements it has been stressed that uh, this is really beneficial for, for countries. Uh, this must be done uh, or try to do it in a structured way this kind of a cooperation and we, we need to have a stronger commitment from, from the national um, or member states. Um, then there was an uh, important uh, point that uh, the strategy is quite uh, heavy and it is really important that now we try to prioritize the uh, teams and the actions that we will be performing in the near future. Uh, we need to have some kind of a long-term um, schedule or long-term plan. Uh, what are we going to do by which uh, instruments? Um, and one of the things that was uh, stressed uh, was also that we need to have all the stakeholders on board. We need to have the researchers, the policy makers, and other stakeholders, the end users. And uh, for this, we need to have some kind of a platform how to do it. Uh, it was nice to hear that uh, the calls that we have so far performed have been very successful and uh, at least uh, researchers were also uh, happy with them. So there is not much to be changed, but uh, maybe we should move also to other kind of um, um, activities such as uh, knowledge hub and to have a tighter um, exchange of uh, knowledge between different uh, stakeholders. Um, I would like to thank all the panelists for a very uh, nice uh, discussion and also thank the audience for very uh, important uh, and topical questions. So thank you. Thank you, Laura. Thank you well very done. much. Thank you, Panos. We now have the poster session. If you have about 20 25 minutes, I will round you all up again in about 20 minutes. Please, uh, please go and talk to the poster people. Thank you.